Hey folks, Larry Wingate here. All right, so Rosemary and I go out for breakfast. I love to go out for breakfast. The difference is Rosemary likes to go out to these really foo-foo kind of places where, you know, an omelet costs you 25 bucks and you get to wait in line forever. I hate waiting in line and, you know, and that's all sweet and wonderful and, you know, there'll be eight people in the kitchen right over there and 30 people in the restaurant and eight waiters or waitresses and you still can't get any service. Somehow she thinks that's fun. Me, I like a diner. Uh, we went to one of Rosemary's kind of places last week. It was my turn. We went to my place, Jim's Coney Island. My kind of joint. Jim's Coney Island. Serves a breakfast, two eggs, three slices of bacon, a biscuit and gravy, uh, crispy hash browns. You get all that for like six bucks. My kind of place. Anyway, so we're in there. And uh, I mean, the place is packed. Probably 40 people. Every table is full. Big bar up there and it's all full. And uh, they get the counter. Two guys cooking in the back. You can see them in there. Two waitresses who also act as, ca as the cashiers. So they're taking the money and ringing you up and waiting on the tables, making sure everybody's got coffee and all of that stuff. Uh, Rosemary said, this is really crowded. We're not going to get very good service. I said, well, we'll see. We sit down. Uh, the service was immediate. I said, y'all are busy today. And she said, yeah, I know we really are. Sorry. And I go, no, nah, it's no problem. So we got our coffee instantly. She comes with coffee in her hand. And she didn't say, what are we drinking today? By the way, as an aside, I hate it when people say, what are we having? Are you eating with me? Uh, what are we drinking? Why, are you going to sit down and have a drink with me? What would you like to drink? What are you having? That's the appropriate thing to say. Not what are we having. You ain't joining me unless you're paying for it. Checks on you. And then I'd rather pay for my own and have nobody join me. Anyway, that kind of stupidity in vocabulary just ticks me off. Um, anyway, so she said, yeah, I'm sorry. But she comes with the coffee and sits it down in front of me. She knows 99% of the people who come in for breakfast are going to have a cup of coffee. She's bringing it with her. She pours the coffee. And uh, I said, listen, we know what we want. So she said, sure, great. So she takes our order real quick and off she goes. Uh, I mean, the, the, and, and she's doing this with, there are 40 people. Every table's full and the counter's full. And the, two girls are doing it all. Two guys in the back uh, slinging groceries as quick as they possibly can. Just the food comes really, really fast. And then as we're eating the food, she comes over and says, is everything okay? I said, everything's great. Thank you so much. And she said, I just want to tell you, I'm really sorry for the service today. I feel bad about it. And I go, are you kidding me? The service is incredible today. And then, you know, she brings the check and uh, gets us another cup of coffee. And uh, then when we get ready to leave, you know, we go up and she takes our money. Phenomenal service. Here's my question. How can a place that's charging six bucks an hour, uh, I mean six bucks for a breakfast, and they've got two people in the kitchen and two people out front handle three times as many people with great service as the eight people and eight people in the kitchen and eight people out front with half as many people and they're charging 25 bucks for an omelet. How can that be? You ever think about that? I know you've experienced the same thing. How can one little joint do so much better. I t it comes down to leadership and expectation and desire. Uh, th these people want to do a good job. That's why they do a good job. There's a great lesson for anybody in business. People do a good job when they want to do a good job. And if somebody doesn't want to do a good job, doesn't matter how much you pay them, that $15 an hour horse shit that we're trying in Seattle, which is bankrupting businesses up there, and it will across the country too, because uh, lots of stuff about that. I wrote about that in my last book. But um, uh, you, you, I don't care what you pay people. If they don't want to work hard, they're not going to work hard no matter what you pay them. They don't want to. These people want to do a good job. They take pride in the job. That's why they do a good job. Next is expectation. That's expected of them. Uh, th that's good leadership. That's the third thing. Somehow, when they were hired, they were told, this is what your job is. And there, and then it's probably a good leader tells them, communicates what's expected from them, communicates the expectation, 
communication expectation, and then there's an inspection along the way to make sure that's what they're getting. So simple. The key is that that's how you got to run your business, but that's also kind of how you have to run your life, and that's how you have to do your job. You have to set high expectations for yourself and for others, especially for yourself. You have to inspect what you're doing. You have to inspect what others are doing. You have to um, want to do a good job. Um, but you, you know, I, I I talk to small business guys all the time and small business leaders and small business associations and so forth. Is what it always comes down to is people who want to do a good job will do a good job. And people who don't, they're not going to. And we're trying to externally manage the quality of the work we good we get and the quantity of the work we get. And bottom line, I'm not sure that you can effectively do that over a long period of time if you're hiring the wrong people. So when you hire, you got to hire people who are good people. The problem right now with our whole society is what I wrote about and what's wrong with damn near everything is that there aren't that many good people around anymore. Uh, good people who will do the right thing because they know it's the right thing without any incentive, without any external motivation. That's just who they are. And I, I would hope that's how you're raising your kids. And so there's a parenting lesson in here. There's a leadership lesson in, in here. There's a personal development lesson in this thing. That's kind of what this one's about. Hope it makes you think.